ever since I first heard of solar panels connected to big battery, also known as a power wall, I just felt like that's such a cool thing to have and it's something I really wanted to incorporate into my home. Not just to go completely off grid or to have power when there might be a power outage, which is a good thing though, but more so the fact of being somewhat self-sufficient and a little bit independent from the electricity companies. And with the recent uh, spikes in electricity prices, this power wall has actually done some good during the summer and uh, it has been uh, beneficial to have. So we have been running parts of our home on solar energy even though I live in an apartment. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how I built this power wall and a quick overview of all the parts that goes inside of it. And I'm also gonna show you my tiny solar panel array that I have out here on my balcony. My solar panel array is at 150 watts and during summer, it provides about 125 watts peak. Right now in December, it's putting out 25 watts peak so during this time of year, solar is almost useless. And this right here is my DIY power wall with 3.3 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. That is enough to power my TV, some small lights, charge some phones and the iPad for about 24 hours straight. It is completely freestanding and not connected to the grid. It has both a 12 volt and 230 volt outlet. The 230 volt outlet can provide up to 400 watts of power, but this could easily be upgraded with a bigger inverter. So this is where this project begins and it's actually at the end of another project. I just took apart this Nissan Leaf battery pack and these are all the modules that came out of it. And for this project I will be using a few of them, actually 9 of them, but the possibilities here are endless. and. This is what it looks like when I have put them in the box and reused some of the bus bars. So as you see here, I have nine of these modules in here and they are just held in here with four threaded rods. I think they're eight millimeter and they just run through all of them and the left plywood wall and they're just uh, sandwiched against that wall. And this makes it really easy to put together and it's really sturdy and safe. It's almost like building Lego. So the reason I have nine modules is because one module is 8.4 volts. And if I add two of them together, I have 16.8. And if I add three of them together in a series connection, I have about 25 volts at a full charge. So it is almost perfect for a 24 volt battery, but it's not possible to make it into a 12 volt battery. Okay, so let me explain some of the parts that we have here so far. The black part up on the left does an automatic fuse and it's a 70 amp fuse. So it will allow about 1700 watts of power being pulled from the battery without the fuse breaking. Next to the fuse, we have a battery protect from Victron. And this one is gonna disable all uh, power consumption from the battery when the voltage gets too low. And on the bottom we have a Victron Smart Shunt and this one is not really necessary but I have this one so that I can monitor the power draw but also the amount of power going into the battery. And here are the rest of the parts that I will be using in this build. I have a Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller and this is what connects the solar panel to the battery and charges the battery. And this one is uh, programmable via Bluetooth. So I can set the voltage parameters according to what my battery needs. Next to it, we have a DC to DC converter. And this one makes the about 24 volts into a 12 volt that's more usable. Above that, we have the BMS and this is gonna balance the cells while charging, but this is not gonna protect for over discharge but below this we have a, another fuse and this one is going to be connected to the dc 12 volt outlet other than that there's a bunch of cables that i will be using throughout the build
Okay, so that was almost everything. The only thing left to do now is to configure the Victron battery protect. That one has a few different settings for when to turn off the battery from the load and to configure the Victron Smart Solar. So I'm gonna show you at least how to do that, the Victron Smart Solar. So we're just gonna select it, go in here, we're gonna go to settings up in the right corner, go to battery. And in here we can start by selecting a battery preset. We're gonna select one of these presets and we're actually gonna go with the one that's lithium iron phosphate. It's not 100% correct, but it's uh, close enough. So it's gonna turn off equalization voltage since we don't need that. And we don't need the temperature compensation either. Low voltage temperature cutoff is about correct, five degrees. So the only thing we need to do now is to set our charging voltage. And for this pack, it will actually be 25.2 volts at full. If you wanted to make it a bit more conservative for them to make the batteries last longer, you could lower this a little bit. But this is what I'm gonna go with and uh, this is all. So anyhow, thank you for watching this far and uh, I hope you enjoy this video. See you in the next one.